Okay, we're going to look at, um, well, first I'm going to read the first draft from a student of the formal description of a lithograph titled Rue Trasnonian. Um, anyway, it's a lithograph by Daumier. And here's what the student wrote. Um, uh, print name, which I just mentioned. Uh, print type, lithograph, rectangular shaped painting. Okay, first of all, it's a lithograph, it's not a painting. There's no paint involved. Okay, so need to do some research on what a lithograph is. Size, one foot, one and three eighths in inches by one foot, six and three quarters inches. Color, black and white. And the description reads as follows. This lithograph is a close-up scene depiction of the horrific 1834 massacre in a worker's home. The painting draws its audience to the center of the painting. Okay, just first two sentences. Um, this lithograph is a close-up scene of a massacre. Okay, the 18th. 1834 massacre. Okay, it's a little historical fact. We don't necessarily need in the description um, that's formal, but that's that's fine. The the painting again, it's not a painting; it's a lithograph. So it should read: the lithograph draws the audience to the center of the image. Everything's an image. I will continue on. We are confronted with a straightforward image of a man in night clothes, but if you look carefully. He is, in fact, tangled up in the bed linen beside him. The dead, middle-aged man lies atop a dead toddler. His head and little arms are sticking out of the side of the dead man beneath him. The toddler's head is leaking out blood. As horrifying as this scene is, one may feel more horror at the things they can't see, like the shadows that draw the viewer in. The painting's calm strokes denote stillness. The central figure does not look dead, but almost sleeping. On each side of the center dead man are two other victims. On the far left is a dead woman, and on the far right is another dead man whose body is cut off from the painting. All right. So starting with the basics, it is a rectangular shaped lithograph, but tell me if it's horizontal or vertically oriented. So in this case, it's horizontal because it's longer side to side. If we're as taller than it is wide, then it would be vertical. You know, I'm going to use a larger brush just to note the main design elements. Okay, we have the main character here who's occupying all of this space. So the figure is a shape that occupies space. And the bed is probably taken up of the rest of that space. Yep. So early on in your description, you want to divide your picture plane up and tell us where this main character is. It's in the center of the lithograph. Feet pointed towards the left with head on the, on the right third, kind of right third top. Kind of you have to describe where this location is. And the gesture of the person, arms laid out, shoulder against maybe the bed frame, feet splayed out to the left, head tilted down. And if the eyes were open, his gaze would be downward toward his belly. So that expands the description. 
So find shapes and location of the shapes, which you've done with the description of the infant and the other person on the right. Um, you could clarify by saying it's lower right and instead of, uh, let's see, last sentence on the far right is another dead man whose body is cut off from the painting. Okay, so you're concentrating on where it's cutting off. Uh, might be more apt description to say that the head and part of the shoulders are coming in from the lower right into the picture frame. Like this is your whole picture frame. This is essentially your field of vision, your point of view. So it's like this is coming into view instead of being cut off. While you're technically right, what I'm describing is just, um, it evokes a better picture. Um, look how the light is divided. Dark, shadowy area all over here. All of this is in light, bringing your focus, helping bring your focus to the center. You can see through a doorway on the top left. It's faint, but you can see that's, that's another room of some sort. And when you describe this woman, how big is this figure? compared with this figure. What can you see? And what direction is she facing? Uh, straightforward image of a man in night clothes, but if you look carefully. Um, yeah, it's... I'm not sure how straightforward it is, but I think you are, the student here is um, implying that it at first doesn't look like a bad scene. It looks like someone passed out in nice night clothes. He's tangled up in the bed linens. You know how tangled up he is. He's kind of pushed into them and pulling them down. So you see that tension of this this push and this pull of the linens. And the artist achieves that how, in formal terms, how does the artist make this impression of a pulled taut sheet? It's probably a line work. See how straight the lines are here? And there's some shadow area where his head's pushing in to the linens, but the lines aren't as dark. So the difference between the line work, so this is just a little shadow area, kind of a medium shadow area, whereas these lines are much more forceful and straight, giving the impression of some movement of direction. See, see how that crooked line I just made? It doesn't look as forceful. Whereas if I went like that, here, let's do this. Something a little straighter or not as kind of wiggly looks more forceful. And it's darker lines. Let's go back to this. And the pushing back of the head or the slumping is denoted by this subtle gradation from light to mid gray to dark, and the lines are softer, so it's like something's gently pushing into it versus if it was really pushing hard, there would be more forceful lines. And that a general idea can be applied anywhere else in the work. Uh, Just going over the color you mentioned at some point, there's a mention of it black and white. 
Oh yeah. Uh, if you note that the toddler is face down, that's that's an extra descriptive thing that just is going to help you out. Okay, and the description says, quote, as horrifying as this scene is, one may feel more horror at the things they can't see, like the shadows that draw the viewer in. Okay, that whole sentence leading up to where you mentioned the shadows is not needed in a formal description. It's good later, but let's flip it around the other way. Describe the shadows that draw the viewer in. Describe what you're seeing. Don't say what they're doing to you emotionally or content-wise or narrative or story. Just describe the shadows, where they're placed, and how they're making your eye move. If you spend a few sentences on that and be very specific where they are, you know, top left, center, right, bottom, whatever, um, you know, give them a quality. Are they really deep, dark shadows? Are they subtle shadows, etc.? cetera? Um, spend a few sentences describing that. And then when you get to the, um, the analysis, then you can talk about how those shadows are giving uh, this horrifying scene. Okay, so it's you describe what you see first, and the next step, the later assignment and the analysis is what those formal elements are doing to create a story.